Welcome to MSK Freak, to my first joint, the elbow, and to this amazing world of uh, MSK Ultrasound. Welcome to MSKFreak.com, the place created for you, passionate about the anatomy and ultrasound of the musculoskeletal system. Get ready for a new way to learn ultrasound, with amazing images with high quality content in 4K resolution. If you want to know more, don't forget to visit mskyfreak.com. Learning ultrasound with you. So we are going to start with the elbow. Uh, we are going to divide the elbow in four sides, the anterior side, lateral side, medial, and finally posterior side. And we are going to begin with the deep structures, the bones, the um, fat pads, ligaments. Then we are going to the muscles and tendons, and finally to nerves and vessels. Okay? So let's start with the anterior side uh, and bones and the corticals so of the anterior side. So first of all, the distal humerus with the capitulum in the lateral side. The capitulum is this round shaped cortical which uh, articulates with the head of the radius in the lateral side. In the medial side, we will have the trochlea. The trochlea has a V-shape and will articulate with the proximal ulna. Between those trochlea and capitulum, we will find the trochlocapitular groove, dividing both surfaces. Okay. If we go slightly proximal, we will see two fossae. Medially, the coronoid fossa, which is bigger, is um, more, uh, is deeper than the radial fossa located in the lateral side at this level. Both fossae will allow the penetration of the coronoid process, the coronoid fossa and the radial head in the lateral side and allow the maximum flexion of the elbow. Okay. Now we are going to take a closer look to the proximal ulna. The proximal ulna ha has the ulnar notch, this big surface that will articulate with the trochlea. In the lateral side of the proximal ulna, we will find a small notch, which will be the radial notch. This notch will articulate with the head of the radius. In the anterior side, we will find the coronoid process, this prominent lip located just here, okay. and immediately this distal, the ul ulnar tuberosity at this level. This will be the insertion of the brachialis muscle. I want to show you this coronoid process from a medial view sorry, lateral view, and see how this C-shape ulnar notch is so uh, congruent with the trochlea. So it will uh, stabilize the joint. Okay. What about the head of the, uh, what about the radius? The radius has a proximal head of the radius, very cylindrical and easy to see with ultrasound, with uh, almost uh, entirely covered with cartilage, with the section of the lateral area of this uh, radial head. More distal, we will find the radial neck, and more distal, the big radial tuberosity. This tuberosity will be the insertion of the distal tendon of the biceps brachii. Okay, let's continue with other deep structures. Inside the radial fossa, we will find the radial fat pad in the lateral side of the anterior elbow. And in the medial side, inside the coronoid fossa, the coronoid fat pad. The fat pads are located, this is the coronoid fat pad, are located here in the anterior side of the elbow and very deep. And we are going to review the concept because these fat pads are intracapsular but extrasynovial. What does it mean? The synovium is very deep, it's just uh, very close to the cartilage and superficial to this synovium are the fat pads located, but below, underneath the capsule. So the fat pads are between the synovium and the capsule. And this is important because if we have a liquid inside the joint, if we have um, a fusion, this liquid will be located here, between the cortical and the fat pad and we push the fat, the fat pads uh, superficial, okay? So always we want to search for liquid, search here in the 
coronoid or the radial fossa and uh, pushing uh, up, pushing uh, away the, the fat pads. This was the anatomy of the anterior side of the elbow, the bones and joints, and let's take a look to the ultrasound. To perform a good ultrasound exam of the elbow, we will ask the patient to sit in the front of the exam uh, table and uh, the, with the supination of the forearm and uh, with the elbow extended. No totally extended because uh, we need some relaxation, but uh, almost entirely extended and with the forearm over the table. Okay? So in this position, we'll find those structures. And uh, the first position of the probe should be just in, at the crease of the elbow. We will be located at this area here, over the capitulum at the trochlea. And we, if we have a good location, we'll find this image. And this image is very important because almost all the important structures of the anterior side of the elbow are located here and can be easily distinguished. First of all, let's take a look at the corticals. In the lateral side, we will find the capitulum with its round shape, and in the medial side, the trochlea with its V shape. And between those uh, surfaces, the trochlocapitular groove. Okay. What happens if we go, ah, sorry, above these uh, corticals, we'll find the cartilage as an anechoic line and above the capsule as an hyperechoic line just underneath the muscle. What happens if we go slightly proximal? Then we, we will have no longer cartilage present. It will be at the corticals at the fossae. So let's take a look with ultrasound. So we can recognize the coronoid fossa on the medial side, deeper, with the coronoid fat pad, fat pad inside. And in the lateral side, the radial fossa with the radial fat pad inside. Okay. The capsule will surround with cover those fat pads. And you can see here a small amount of liquid in the coronoid recess. When it's a very small amount, it, 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 may, it may be normal. It's not uh, pathologic. Okay? You should have a good amount of liquid inside to, uh, to diagnose it as pathologic. Now we are going to turn the probe 90 degrees and place it over the trochlea and the humero ulnar joint. So you can see here the coronary fossa. You can see here the coronary process distal because this is a proximal ulna. And you can find the joint line. This is the humero-ulnar joint line. Inside the coronary fossa, the coronary fat pad. And in the deep portion, or uh, deep to the coronary fat pad, underneath the coronary fat pad, you may find some small amount of liquid at the recess above the cortical, pushing away the fat pad. Uncovering the fat pad, the capsule that inserts slightly distal to the coronoid process. If we move the probe laterally, we will find some other structures. So this will be the distal humerus with the radial fossa. Look at, sorry, with the radial fossa at this level here, and this will be the capitulum, okay, with the cartilage above. So this will be the radial head on the long axis, of course. This is the, the humeral radial joint line between those bones. The radial fat pad will be located at the radial fossa. And again, the capsule will cover all these structures okay, as a thin hyperechoic line underneath the muscle. So those were all the bony structures and deep structures of the anterior side of the elbow. Now let's move to the muscles and tendons. Thank you. We are going to start the scan of the elbow placing the probe over the anterior crease. At this location, we can see the corticals of the articular surface of the humerus with the capitulum with its round shape lateral and the trochlea with its V-shape middle and between them, the trochlear capitular groove. 
Just above the corticals you will see an anechoic line which will be the cartilage and above an hypergoic line which will be the anterior capsule, just below the muscle. Sweeping the probe proximally you will find two fossae. Medially, the bigger one is the coronoid fossa and laterally the smaller one will be the radial fossa. Inside the coronoid fossa you will find the fat pad and the recess between the fat pad and the cortical and in the lateral side the radial fat pad. Both fat pads will be intracapsular but extrasynovial. Now we have rotated 90 degrees the probe and we are on the longitudinal plane of the elbow at the unohumeral joint. You will see the coronoid process, the coronoid fossa, the fat pad and the recess between the fat pad and the cortical. Above you can see the capsule. Remember that these fat pads are intracapsular per extrasynovial. Once we have checked the unohumeral joint, we are going to go to the capitulum, as you can see here, and turn the probe again to see the radiohumeral joint. In this image, you can see distally the radial head, the cartilage of the capitulum, and the radial fossa. Inside the radial fossa, the radial fat pad and above, covering these areas, the capsule. In normal conditions, there is no liquid or a small amount into the recess. Let me introduce our book, Ultrasound of the Musculoskeletal System. This book has been created for all those passionate about MSK ultrasound. More than 500 pages about anatomy and pathology. Inside the book, you will find amazing images of anatomy, sonanatomy and pathology. This will improve and facilitate your knowledge in ultrasound. If you want more information, take a look at mskroom.com.